Today I will again talk about uh, power systems voltage stability, but this time with an improved line model. It is a traveling wave line model. You remember we had already a lesson about the generics of power system voltage stability. Go there and have a look at it. It's a basis for this uh, lesson. We still talk about uh, power system stability in generic terms, which is based on three distinct criteria, voltage stability, frequency and angular stability. We still talk about voltage uh, stability, but this time we use a better uh, line model, a traveling wave line model. Remember the simple model we used uh, last time. So we had a source, we had a load and we had a lumped inductance of one microhenry per meter. This time we will change the model to a traveling wave model, which is modeling a distributed inductance and a distributed capacitance as well. Here we have the two models. This is the simplified models. This is the more complex model with the distributed element uh, traveling wave model. We just run the simulation now. Here you see the transient behavior of both the simplified model, you see that uh, the transient behavior is very simple. You see here the load voltage, whereas when you're looking at the traveling wave model, you see that still the source is exactly the same, but then the load uh, has these uh, impulses going back and forth. So this is a typical transient uh, behavior. If we now go to infinite looping, we see also a very noticeable difference between the voltage at the line end of the simplified model where we see that given a relatively high impeded load impedance, the voltage at the source and at the load are on the same level. And this is now different with this new better model where you see that at the low load, that means a high resistance at the load, the voltage at the load is uh, much, much higher. We talk here maybe about 50% or even more higher than the source voltage. And this is really now due to the reactive power in the line, and this we will have to compensate in the future. From now on, we will stay with this more complex model. So the first case we want to have a look at is that if the voltage at the load is higher than the nominal system voltage, there is a surplus capacitive reactive power, and we have to compensate it by means of a reactor at the line end. We can also put the reactor at both line ends. I have now added the reactor at one of the line ends, and uh, I will now switch on this reactor and look at what happens on the voltage curve. You see that switching on or off the voltage at the line end is compensating for the capacitive surplus reactive power uh, in the line. Now we increase the load. So the voltage at the load will be reduced. And if the voltage at the load is within the tolerance, then we do not need any compensation at all. To make the case, I again switched off my reactor, so the voltage is again higher than at the source. Now I reduce uh, the load voltage, meaning I increase the power at the load. You can see now that the voltage at the load with increasing power is diminishing. So now we have basically a load voltage with it, which is in the scope of the nominal. Therefore, I do not need any more reactor. If the reactor would now be switched on, the voltage there would be under voltage. So here, I do not need a reactor. If I continue to increase the load, the voltage at the load will reduce further. There will be under voltage, and then I come to come to K3. Then I have a surplus in a reactive power in the line. And this reactive power has to be compensated by a capacitor at the load. Let's now dec further decre increase the load. Then you will see that the voltage at the load is further decreasing. And now I would be in an under voltage conditions. This would be critical. 
and therefore I have to use a capacitor to compensate this uh, on the voltage. So to compensate uh, the reactive power in the system, we need to have uh, reactive power compensation. For overvoltage, we compensate by means of reactors. For undervoltage, we compensate by means of capacitors. These components can be placed normally at line ends within the frame of substations. They are quite big, these reactors, for example, here, and they are expensive, but they are very important for the stability of the system. As usual, I have built up a model in my simulator. You can access the simulator on this address here. Play with it, then you get a good feeling of uh, how this whole voltage stability works.